Our NASA reporter Greg McCampbell recently took an outer space type adventure and found experiments in zero gravity could result in a whole new way of life. Tonight, Greg joins us to talk about that and also how microgravity research is actually changing the way NASA does business, Greg. That's right. NASA says space is no longer just for astronauts. Breakthroughs in microgravity are sending a new generation of people into space. NASA is training civilians to work in outer space. These civilians are younger and older than your average astronaut. What they're doing in weightlessness is the focus of tonight's special assignment report. NASA's cargo plane used for training astronauts in weightlessness is no longer just for astronauts. These students from Louisiana Tech University want to revolutionize computer technology. They believe a breakthrough discovery could happen if it can be tested in zero gravity. NASA's helping their dream come true. And you have this high heat that's concentrated on a computer chip, and you have to find ways to effectively cool that chip. That's what we're thinking about. It's like a type of cooling technology for electronic components. This flight is the first for NASA bringing together 23 colleges and universities to work in zero gravity. And here are students from the University of Alabama in Huntsville. They were chosen to do experiments aboard the KC-135. They're testing the effects of how fluids act in weightlessness. But they had a bad experience. On the UAH's team's first flight, the experiment developed some mechanical problems. It, it didn't turn out as well as we had hoped. We'd had some problems right before we got started, so I'm not sure exactly uh, how good our data will be, but we recorded all of it and we did the best we could. Many students on the flight will become aerospace engineers, but not all. UAH's Jennifer Luter is a nursing student who joined the engineering students. UAH is a member of the Space Grant Universities. That's NASA's way of opening up the space program to others. This is a taste of what it's like to be on orbit and uh, what it's like to work for NASA. NASA says microgravity science will help kill deadly viruses, cure cancer, and improve technology. The Marshall Space Flight Center leads all other NASA centers when it comes to microgravity science research. But Marshall's neutral buoyancy simulator tank used to simulate weightlessness may close because the Johnson Space Center in Houston built a bigger tank. The Johnson Space Center neutral buoyancy laboratory is big, as most things are in Texas. But is bigger better? Can this tank put Huntsville's neutral buoyancy simulator out of business? The Texas tank will be able to handle larger jobs, but some sources say work could get backlogged because more and more companies are getting into the space business. Most people think the Marshall Space Flight Center's neutral buoyancy simulator is for training astronauts, but that's not exactly so. Our customers are primarily engineers and designers who, who have brought their hardware in here to, to check out the design. It's not the astronauts who do early work on hardware development. It's usually engineers and designers who put on spacesuits and test their own equipment at Marshall's neutral buoyancy tank. Marshall says its operation is self-sufficient. It doesn't cost taxpayers a dime. They say it either makes money or breaks even. And Marshall also says 75 to 100 projects a year are worked on in the NBS tank. And Marshall's customer base is expected to grow as more commercial companies look for a place to test their wares. We, uh, we saw, Greg, the students doing tests on the KC-135, that vomit comet, as they call yeah. it. Uh, right. Do they also get to test in this neutral buoyancy simulator at Marshall? No, we just get to look out here at the neutral buoyancy simulator. It's very expensive to have someone go in, put on the suit, be fitted, the whole thing. It's a long, long process that I went through. We have watched over the years so much research go on at the neutral buoyancy tank. I don't know if I want to know the Since answer to this. 1968. No kidding. I don't want to know the answer, but I, we do have to ask it. When is it scheduled to close? Down. Well, officially it was a scheduled to close down six months after they, they built the Johnson Center, the, the neutral buoyancy lab out there. Okay. But uh, they ran into some glitches, and right now it's on hold. I've been talking to Congressman Bud Kramer. He hasn't gotten a definite word on it, but uh, we're trying to hold on to it here. I'm sure he's doing a good fight yeah. in Washington. Greg, thank you very much. Fascinating Very as interesting usual. stuff. Yeah, thank All you. Right. Thank you. More